Okay, so in this video, we're looking at Google Keep. Now you can actually find Google Keep over here on the right hand side in Gmail or in Slides or in a lot of other of the Google um, applications. So you could launch it from here or if you want you can just go to keep.google.com which will launch Google Keep for you as well. Now in Google Keep you can use this really for lots of different things. So you can see I've got to-do list here I've got someone else's to-do list because I've shared it with them and they're going to help me with doing those activities you can see here I've got ones that have photos on it I have ones that have drawings in them and others that have a series of photos in with them there's ones with checklists one without checklists they can put links into these things as well and so you can see here some of them are shared with multiple people and others are just for myself so Let's talk a little bit about what they are. So Google Keep is like a notes section. So if I go up to the top, I want to take a new note. So I want to give it a title. So let's call this a test note. And then I go here to take my notes and so I can write about anything that's going on. Now with this note, let's say this is for, let's say I have a phone call tomorrow. Okay, and I might even put on just a random number here. I have no idea who this is. I might even make it too long. Okay, so there's my number that I'm going to call. And here I can set it to remind me. So remind me tomorrow at 10, 8 a.m. next week, etc. I can pick the date and time myself if I like. I can make it repeat if I want to. I can also make it so that it sends me the reminder when I'm in a particular place uh, because Keep has an app on your phone. And so if I need to be reminded to do something while I'm at school to bring it home, I might say when I get to school, remind me to do um, to put this in my to make this phone call, for example. So I can set the reminder, let's say tomorrow at eight o'clock. So that comes up here. I can also share this. Let's say that I'm actually going to be making this phone call with two or three other people. And so I could then start to type in their names in here and their email addresses uh, will begin to come up cancel there for adding the collaborators. I can color code it so if I want it to be yellow I can click here and it'll be yellow. You can make it any color and you can have a, um, a whole structure for your colors if you like. You can add images. So let's just find a random image here. here we go. Let's put my logo in there. Okay and we'll stick that in at the top, always at the top. I can archive it, so once I'm finished with it, I can press this and get rid of it. I can go here for more, so here I can delete the note. I can add a label to it, so let's decide that I want this list to be you know, my phone call labels. And so I can actually make it so that all of them get these labels on them, and so if I have others that are related to each other, I can group them together and filter through my to-do list by my labels, or my notes by my labels that I attach to them. Other things in here, I could add a drawing. And if I click that, it's gonna launch into here. And I just draw away whatever it happens to be. Maybe I'll put a lovely star in here. Um, but yeah, and so I can rub these out. I can change what I'm using. I can stick in a grid if I like. So I can see how it's going. Or if I want lines on my drawing for handwriting notes, it's really good and then once I'm happy with it click next and it'll go on here and basically it kind of is entered as a, like a bit like an image and it will go through but I can click it and edit it later if I want to. I can make a copy of my Google Keep notes. I can choose to show checkboxes so if I do that you'll see now that the phone call has a checkbox on it and now the good thing about these checkboxes too is I can have more things in here so let's say during the phone call, I want to talk about uh, next year's workshops. Maybe I want to talk to people about being an affiliate or something like that. And so then I can actually make this a subset of the first note. And so I could go through and tick these off one at a time. You see that tick, they go down here. All right? Or I can say that they're not ticked anymore. Stick them back at the top. But if I do it all on the phone call at once, I can actually then just tick the phone call and all of it will disappear. 
which is quite satisfying in terms of to-do lists, but also really nice and easy to check on what I've done, etc. Let's put it back up. What else can we do down here? I can grab image text. So if I click that, image text has been grabbed. And so then I can essentially just go and paste that somewhere else. What else can I do here? And I can copy it to docs. So if I want to turn my notes that I've taken in Google Keep into a Google Doc, I just click this button and it will then insert, create it as a Google Doc for me, which is quite nice as well. So that's your basics of how to use it. You can undo things down here. Uh, you should, where's my pin up here at the top? I can pin this to the top of my list as well. So now when I click close, here it is pinned and it's color coded, beautiful. If I only want to see my phone calls, that's the only one I can see. I can edit just the labels and create a big list. So let's say this is the nine notes, All right? And I can just add as many of those as I like. Makes things quite simple and easy. It's got its reminder on there and these are your notes. So you can also here just automatically create a new list with dot points and automatically take a new note by drawing. So go straight to this bit here, or I can automatically put a new note with images. So I don't have to think about it too much. Up here, this is refreshing your notes. So if you're, you share it with a collaborator or they just share it with you, you might need to refresh it so that you see it a bit faster. This is to create a list view rather than the square toggle view. So now if I go to all my notes, and so now this is in a list view, so they're one underneath the other. Or well, if I click like that, there's a big kind of square thing of them. Go to settings and disable the dark theme. And now it's bright. I can go to, obviously you can send feedback, all those types of things. App downloads, keyboard shortcuts and get help. If you go to your settings, I can automatically add new items to the bottom or to the top. I can move checked items to the bottom if I want to or just make them disappear completely. I can display rich link previews. So when I link things like pdhp.net here, it looks like that. Um, and I can also here just click there to enable the dark theme. These are my default times for reminders. I can change those to save me a bit of time as well. And I've enabled sharing with all of these. So if you can't share and add collaborators, you might need to click here to enable sharing. Now that's really good. So one of the main things I use this for is for group work of students to share with to-do lists with each other and then other people tick things off. Uh, and it just is really helpful as a way to get through stuff and to, to see who's doing what and all that kind of stuff. So a great little tool, just fun, easy thing to use. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you'll be able to access them from lots of other apps too, which makes it a great little tool even just to take notes while you're marking someone, or if you think, oh, this is a fantastic one, you can open up Google Keep in an assignment and just write you know, the student's name, let's say John's assignment, fantastic for question three. And there you have a great example that you can then share with the class and just dename it if you want to, uh, to make it anonymous in terms of feedback and having a look at it and comparing it to the criteria that you've created. So I'm gonna leave it here and talk to you a bit more about how I use it in my classroom in the next video.